Uh, Nate Adams from Chassis Media is joining us because uh, he knows all the ins and outs. We want to get into this uh, Alec Baldwin situation, and he has been on many. Nate has done many movies and been on many sets and dealt with uh, these subjects. And also Dave Halls, who is the first AD on that set, who I believe was the one who said cold gun or good gun or something yeah, like it's, that it's cold weapon yeah cold weapon was our well we worked with dave for uh, quite some time yeah he was the uh first ad on road hard oh wow um but first in breaking uh airport security news <laughs> turns out that our own mike dawson may have chugged a stranger's gatorade in line leaving vegas on sundays that the uh, Mike's eating now, but is that a, is that a true story? That is a true story. <laughs> Take him through the beats, Dawson. I didn't think I could fall more deeply in love with you. Was it full Dawson, of chewing tobacco? But, uh, I love it. His no, so, so what happened? So I had to go through clear. Thankfully, Brian gave me the invite to clear yeah. for like three months free. So I went ahead and tried it because mm-hmm. my TSA pre never shows up on my ticket. Yeah. It yeah. just never works. Yeah. Um, so I go through clear, Gina goes the other way and it's, we're at the clear line. And I guess, you know, everyone's loosey goosey when they get through these lines and this guy had a half a bottle of Gatorade and the guy's like, Hey man, you got to finish that or throw it away. The security guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I said, I'll finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he looks at me for a half a second, like, and then he's like, I don't give a shit. Here you go. Yeah. All right. So a couple and things. So I chugged it and threw it away. What uh, what flavor? Orange. Yeah, good. Traditional. Yeah. I like that. I don't like all the blue mountain blue Arctic blast, blast yeah. and all that bullshit. You Stuff that's not even a flavor you don't trust in nature. People, adults who drink that. Right. But now speaking of the adults, you know what I mean? Let's let's break it down. Like, if the guy does he have a mustache? Is he wearing cowboy boots? Like there's stuff I want to know. Does he have black a black dude? Yeah, black dude. Probably about five nine. Mm. Buck 50. Oh. Okay, so it seems fit. About 36, 37. Yeah, that's a good demo. I mean, for sharing. Yeah, sure. Gatorade. you're probably good. Healthy dude. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think about it. Well, like, you know, if you had a, like if a guy had a chain on his wallet, uh-huh. I'd be less apt to want to grab the Gatorade. Like, I don't, mm. I don't know what kind of composite I'm putting together in my head. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. There's certain apparel, like yeah. maybe if he's wearing a members only jacket, I wouldn't want to hit off it. Oh, not I'm, I'm not trying into to it? think. Well, first thing I would do is I would be much more apt to do it with a woman. Oh, for sure. For no good reason. Yeah. It's like how, how female, how women's bathrooms in public places are always cleaner. Yeah. But uh, a brother. So, in a way, this is you just kind of reaching across the gap. Bridging the gap. Aisle, bridging yeah. the gap. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Actually, it was the Gatorade that was talking to me. Uh huh. A little, de- re- little dehydrated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Didn't mm-hmm. really care. It was on the other end of it. But mm-hmm. I, see, I see your logic in that. If it was someone uh, with an oxygen tank, you yeah, know, heavy a few set, hundred pounds maybe. in a wheelchair, yeah. Yeah. I might think twice. Sore. I don't know why. Yeah. Cold source one. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? If it was a, uh, one of the dancing girls. Jumping back on the Southwest flight, coming the back on the Express. I might have not drank hers. Oh, yeah. really? I yeah. Might not have. We were shocked you know? as to how few dancers there were coming back mid morning on a Sunday on a Southwest flight. All right. Well, uh, you're a hero, Thank Dawson, you. and I don't throw that word around lightly. Uh, yes. Sorry, real quick. I just got to confirm something with you guys. Um, Last night, last night, two nights ago, whenever, whenever we were there, I was feeling great. We went to a great party, so much fun. Went down, hung out with everybody. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of. I'm just gonna grab a hundred bucks. I'm gonna do a couple of slots. I'm gonna do a little video poker. I'm gonna go over to the tables. It's gonna be great. So I got a hundred dollar bill. I put it in the slots. It said twenty five. I was like, sweet. So I'll max bet, you know, quarter. And Mm -hmm. I did that three times. I was like, ah, fuck this. I'm going to go to, you know, to to just sharpen my skills a little at video poker and then I'll go to the tables. So I cashed out, didn't look at the voucher, put the voucher in video poker. And it kept saying, like, please add money. I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I just put this voucher and I just did three pulls. There's got to be plenty of money on there. I couldn't figure it out. I cashed out without ever doing it. 60 cents. Mm. So. 
I went insane trying to figure out what the fuck happened to my hundred dollars. I even went down early in the morning to try and find the slot machine to yeah. no avail. Is it possible that it was a twenty-five dollar slot and not a twenty-five cent slot? Well, Nate, Nate would. Well, Nate, you do a lot of gambling, but you don't do a lot of slot machine gambling. Yeah, I only do poker. But the one thing that I did play some slots when I was going through the Vegas airport. But what I've noticed is they've got like uh, they've got like 15 different ways you can bet. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, the, and if you press max bet, I sometimes three it times. is like 30 <laughs> yeah, bucks. 25 cent machine. It'll but make it, like, yeah, they what, got like, 15 like 100 different, bets Yeah, they got 100 you. different yeah. directions that it can go. So it just maxes I out your money no really idea. fast. I was I couldn't figure out where the money went. Okay, well, fuck them. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I feel about video games the way I feel about pizza with really doughy crust. Mm. It's like all the bad carbs, none of the upside. Yeah, like, you're right. I, I feel like you get all the downside of gambling yes. with none of the social part mm. of it or the part that makes it fun. I agree. That's why I was making my way to the tables, but I couldn't do that with 60 cents. And the uh, minimums over there on a Saturday night, whoo, steep. What are they? <laughs> Uh, it was a hundred at blackjack. Yeah, I was gonna say. Wow. The, wow. The, I, I I walked around all the craps tables and uh, everyone. The minimum was fifty dollars. Normally it's like twenty five right. is high. Fifty bucks a roll. That you're you're done in like two seconds. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> or you're rich in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. So what do you know about uh, protocol? What do you know about this particular case? What do you know about these sets? Yeah. What, so what skinny did you get? Uh, well, I'll give a little background. So I direct second unit on movies, done a few. Uh, and the one I just did with Ruby Rose and Morgan Freeman, we did gunfire on set. You know, you have an armorer. So the armorer's job is to do everything that has to do with weapons. You know, mm -hmm. they touch them. They, and then the first AD, uh, his job is overall set safety, mm -hmm. letting everyone know. So when we have an armorer on set, and the other thing that's a little odd about this to me is... Uh, we, we never fired one blank, one bullet because the visual effects are so good now. It's so easy just to put those, sure. you know, muzzle, muzzle flares yeah. in, in post. And then you can put the squib, you know, you can put the bullets bouncing off walls or cars in post. It's so easy to do. And so I think the shot they were going for was Alec Baldwin firing. It's And it's an old school gun. So it's an old Western that mm -hmm. you got to hammer back. You know, it's, it's manual. Six shooter. Yeah. And... I think he was firing it right into camera, which is mm -hmm. where the DP is sitting. Right. Right. I right. believe that's what happened. But anyone who, you know, as Adam knows, I'm from Montana. I grew up around guns, you know. Uh, it, the difference between a blank and a, and a gun, you know, there's no projectile on a blank. There's no, as you'd call it, lead. Right. You know, so a, a, a blank bullet has kind of a little bit of a top with br the brass, which is the... Casing. You know, the, the casing that the gunpowder goes in. It's like in. crimped, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just sort of cropped at the top, like a little tiny maybe pyramid like right, this. Right, because they need to create the pressure, Yes. right? If you yeah. just leave it open, you don't get mm. any gas or back pressure. You have to okay. sort of crimp the end. Okay. Close. Yeah, and, and what can happen with those and what, like, even on a set when you're going to do, you know, if I'm going to shoot Brian, you just position the camera so that I point the gun at the wall, but it looks like I'm pointing right at Brian because how you point the camera, and that's part right. of like what a, a second unit director or an action person does. But you never point the gun directly at Brian because even though you're firing a blank, you know, there's sometimes paper, there's things mm -hmm. that can still come out. You know, you don't want to like put a blank in someone's face and pull a trigger. A little yeah. shrapnel. Yeah. Like it's Brandon, a concussion. Yeah, and Brandon Lee, like they are using all automatic weapons, and what happened is one of the brass cartridges got rolled up into the firing mechanism and then the next bullet hit it you know the, the it just fired that case the next oh. bullet didn't the, hit it yeah, but the, the gas the pressure yeah, blew it the out gunpowder blew it right. out the wow. barrel of the gun and he was hit by it right um and, yeah hey chris i don't know why i haven't i haven't looked up this man show bit in a million years oh, but i think it was sloppy joe, sloppy joe. uh <laughs> the reason i'm saying that's because i we didn't do any man show bits with guns except for I did go try out for the Hawthorne SWAT team, and I did fire every gun they had. That was kind of fun, but that was a real gun. But the only time we dealt with blanks and fakes and stuff like that was we did a cop buddy show called Sloppy Joe, I think. 
And, yeah, the gun guy showed up. They're always the guy. They're in their 50s or their 60s. They have big calves, you know. <laughs> they don't call it a gun. They call it a weapon. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all it, the protocol, more protocol, right. just hard-ass dudes. So the idea that there was this 24-year-old woman, I guess, who was doing this, that that doesn't comport with right. what you're – it, It's like saying – Oh, yeah, my Southwest mm. pilot was a 19-year-old. Right. Like, it's like, mm. huh, what? No, pilots are this person. Yeah, I read that her father yeah. was, like, yeah. big in he the industry. Big armor. But that not not that unrecently she had given an interview about, like, kind of being nervous about taking on this it role. It was her second film. Oy. And the, the other thing the, the other thing that the, is the armor's job, which, and, and I personally, like, if I'm directing and we use a weapon, you know, we had weapons on our set, I because I know so much about guns. I, I open the clip. I, I check the gun in the chamber and make sure there's nothing in it. They walk out and say, you know, weapon on set. They open it. They show all the talent. They show everyone. I usually deal with stunt guys who are very, you know, familiar with guns and weapons and stuff. But everyone should see the, the gun is empty. That's interesting you say that. I had heard from someone who knows that an uh, interesting fact is that anyone supposedly on the set can go up to the armorer and say, let me see the weapon. You, you show it to everyone because yeah. everyone needs to be comfortable, crew included. The guy with the sure, camera, sure, you course. know, the guy hold, we you know, the, the gaffer, every, everyone needs to be comfortable that there's a, li- a weapon that could potentially be live on set. For me, the confusion of there, there shouldn't be a live round anywhere near a set. Right. Period. It shouldn't be there because who knows who could grab it, put it, you know, people mm-hmm. don't, uh, normal people don't know the difference between a blank and a live no. round, possibly, you know, you, that shouldn't have been they anywhere near the They said they set. were using the gun for target practice like or earlier. something. What, what would that even be about? Other than general amusement, like, the, the only were they thing filming you, like a can being shot off a fence or something? Even that, you'd you wouldn't cheat. do it. No, right? I would cheat that. But what they may have been trying to do is to get Alec Baldwin familiar with the recoil of the weapon. You mm-hmm. know, when you fire it, you get a recoil, and mm-hmm. I believe it was a forty-four. So the, those two have a good kick to them. But I, that would be the only reason. And again, I would still probably use blanks, just and you know, unless you're at a proper range. And yeah, you know, I I don't know why you need a live round. Well, you said something interesting too, Adam, which is Alec Baldwin, the actor, in the clear. Alec Baldwin, the executive producer, has a problem. It it seems. I mean, it, yeah, it seems that... that way. And that, look, anyone who's ever been the boss can can tell you that you know somebody can slip and fall at your supermarket. You could be at another location. Mm-hmm. You're still going to be the one. Right. You're the deep pocket. Right. They're not going to sue the guy working the deli counter. It's who may have spilt the stuff you slipped right. on doesn't really matter. They they go up the food chain and they try to find who's got the pockets and that's who they go after. Right. Yeah. And, and as far as like set etiquette, the way that that would work is the talent. They they should and would not ever be responsible because the armor and the first AD are the two people that is their job to make sure that talent is handed an unloaded clean weapon. That is their job to check it. It is their job to make sure, and in their in their job is to enforce safety protocol on set. So. Right, but at a certain point, I mean, I can hear I, I hear Mark Aragos's voice in my head all the time, That's which tough. is like, they'll go, oh, and then who hired this inexperienced person? Oh, you're trying to save a few dollars in hiring right. this person. That's, you knew they weren't yeah. qualified. Where now it starts drifting back toward management. That's where Alec Baldwin, that the producer. Right. Is in, you know, that's where you become issues because as a producer, your your job is to hire everyone that works on the set and you are then accountable in that. Well, and to make matters even more heartbreaking, you know, we heard that there was this crew walkout that day because of unsafe conditions. Well, guess who didn't walk out? Helena Hutchins, who felt responsible to not leave her crew and to not leave the set. So yeah. This is very sad. Very sad indeed. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, uh, Nate Adams. Run back to the other shop. Get some work done. <laughs> let's, uh, let's quickly plug Adam Carolla's go- Going Racing with Adam Carolla on our Pluto channel. If you have not seen it, you need to take a look at it. Channel 687, Pluto TV. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Yes.
real car guys doing real car stuff instead of just guys with tattoos arguing in a shop. <laughs> All right, which is now the, my, my greatest lament. You, you guys think there's a whole bunch of car shows for car guys. There, there isn't. There's just a bunch of dudes with tattoos <laughs> screaming, we're not going to make SEMA in time. That's it. That's the, They're not... If you're really the into cars, shows. there's no real right. cars. Then there's who is no that real for? Stuff. I, the people who create the car shows are not car people. Sure. They work for whatever channels, and mm-hmm. they previously worked on the Real Housewives right. of Orange County or something. They're like, where's the drama? Where's the drama? It's like, where are the cars, you fucking assholes? And they get the same old shit. The other thing, too, is they get the same old cars. They're not interesting. They're not smart. They're not expensive. There's nothing cool about them. They never go racing. It's blah. But does anyone call the mechanic a total bitch? <laughs> Throw a drink in his face? <gasps> oh, God. All right. We have uh, DJ Khaled uh, playing the uh, the oh, guitar. He is, People keep sending me this. He is a master guitarist. Yeah. He's, he's, um, he's right up there with Charo. <laughs> So uh, this yeah. is a clip. So well, this is so he he got a gift. He was gifted a guitar from the Marley mm-hmm. Estate, just saying thanks for supporting and being uh, supporting the reggae community. And uh, and so as a tribute, they gave him this guitar. And he has his assistant read this note. It's it's, and then he, he begins to play it at the end. So let's just watch the whole thing. It's a minute long. It's, it's incredible. Get a close up. Get a close up. Get a close up of the case, the guitar. You know what I'm saying? And a special note from the Marley family. Shout out to the Marley. Melissa, can you read this for me? Can you read this to the world, please? Okay. Um, DJ Khaled, we are excited to share this new guitar with you. As someone who has an appreciation for Bob Marley's life and music, we want you to be one of the first to play the Gildy 20 Marley based on Bob's at-home songwriting guitar from 56 Hope Road. This guitar inspired songs that help unite the world, and we hope it gives you inspiration as well. Doing. Just an open fret and some strumming. Hey, Chris. Not a bad tune. Speaking of tuning. <laughs> Come on. My dad's sitting in with the horn. <laughs> Mash that up. I got to hear him playing with my dad. Um, He, he picked... World, and we- he basically picked the guitar up and was like sizing it up Yeah, is obviously as if he picked up a guitar, knew something about it. Was making a plan. Guitar. Yeah. That'd just be like, (laughs) that'd be like taking Matt Fondelier and handing him like a air impact wrench and him like (laughs) going in. Okay. Mm. Like sizing it up, Uh eyeballing it. How does this thing work? I'm surprised he held the right side out. Yeah. We're assuming he's right-handed, but yeah. Sorry, can we have DJ and uh, Pops Corolla mashed up? Well. <laughs> Who's mastered their instrument better, Jay Corolla or DJ? Remix. Buffalo Soldier. I kind of like it now. Keep it going, old man. <laughs> the fretting hand was just really something. Was he doing anything, Dawson? No. No. Uh, he was literally just... It's an out-of-tune open fret, and he was just going crazy on it. But again, is he just gaslighting America and, and the world? Well, like, But we're not gaslighted. He was gaslighting our, himself. But doesn't he have a secret that he'd like to keep from us, which is he doesn't have any musical ability whatsoever. That's why, true. why advertise? Now That's he's celebrating point. it. He's celebrating it. How'd you gain the weight? All right. We, we, uh, yeah, the great Larry King, uh, we passed, I don't know if you guys saw this, but at the hotel, we passed a, a sandwich shop that was just called Lardo. Yes. Yeah, Lardo. Yeah. I had a porchetta from there. Dude, I wanted something from there, but <laughs> you know, have you seen it, Lardo? It Lardo. And, uh, what's their saying? Like <laughs> the fat, all the fat that's fit to print or something. <laughs> like they had some sort it's of a like fit to pinch. <laughs> it's Lardo, yeah. and then it says something Ooh. about being fat. You didn't? Didn't we catch that? No, I. You just told me you passed by it. I didn't. I oh, didn't you didn't see it. But didn't you go? I oh, ate yeah. there. Well, Lardo was set up outside, and then it was also in the uh, food court area. 
Right. But Chris, didn't you go like, oh yeah, or something? Like no. you saw it? No, I didn't see it. That was oh. when you said it. Oh, okay. Well, you can find you that can find the picture. Yeah, that was me. It was I delicious. Was like, I was like, it, is it, it, it looks good. Sorry. Is it bringing fat back? Yes. Lardo, bringing fat back. Well, we're now there. We've just leaned into it. <laughs> and mean, it was funny tubbies. because I, w- I went down <laughs> really, there. That's where we're at. I went down there right when we got to the hotel because I was really hungry. And no line at Lardo, which was phenomenal. Line around the block for Hattie's or Hattie oh, I went to Hattie's. People Hattie really bees, wanted yeah, that for the fried crispy chicken. chicken sandwich. It was really good. <laughs> um, all right, Max Pad. Oh, do we ever find uh, Sloppy Joe? <laughs> no, no, I can't I find it. I wonder that is. I wonder yeah. what it's called. Definite man show bit. Definite season four, season three, season four. I remember because Jimmy was in a sloppy Joe outfit the entire time, and he was fucking miserable. <laughs> when you put people in a shitty outfit, he's it, in like the, the mascot. Uh, yeah, like yeah. It seems around his it's, it's funny for the first four hours, right. but as you get to the eleventh <laughs> hour, and then you start going, "Let's try it again," and no. then the person in the outfit sweating their ass off is like, "Fuck this! Come on, we let's got go." It. <laughs> Yes. All right. Let's see. Ian Bag is going to uh, join us. He's got some of his uh, mysteries to uh, speak of. I had a funny, a funny visual, which is uh, I went to the dentist office to have my teeth whitened, and um, I'm filming this thing this weekend. Be- became apparent I should probably light my teeth up a shade yeah. or two. And the thing that's funny is you wear. The <clears throat> you wear the mask mm-hmm. into the dentist's office because it's L.A. and you got to wear a mask. And then as soon as you get into the office and into the chair to get your teeth whitened, they put a lip spreader mm-hmm. on you. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Now, it is just an apparatus that gets your lips and your mouth all spread out. Yeah, you look so like we Mr. Ed. Just see, just see the teeth and yeah. gums. But it's funny that off goes the mask and in comes the mouse spreader, which is like now you can't shut your trap even if you try at this at this point. You go from no breathing, no expelling air to wide open. Couldn't be be wider. Open. Did it hurt? It's like it's it's uncomfortable. Not the spreader, but the actual laser treatment. It's, uh, you know, everything is everything that works hurts. Hurts. (laughs) Hurts, <laughs> you know. If something works. There's like, I mean, there's a, there's a version of walking on a treadmill for five minutes and then you know having a beer and going going home. I like but it. that doesn't really burn the calories. Yeah. If you really want to get the effect, you got to kind of the quads have to hurt yeah. a little bit. The yeah. stuff that kind of works in life has to sting a little bit. You have to know what happened. Yeah, you can get the crest whitening toothpaste with flavor crystals in it or something. <laughs> That'll be fine, but it doesn't do anything. It's not penetrating. Yeah, it's kind of how life... It, the, the whole teeth whitening thing is if you want your teeth whitened, it's going to sting. Yeah. And it'll be a little uncomfortable. But then that's, uh, you know, that's what you get. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me hit uh, Simply Safe here. Want to feel a little bit safer at home? No better time than now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving my listeners 40% off their award winning home security. Simply Safe has everything you need indoor and outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, all monitors around the clock by trained professionals who send help to assist you when you need it. Name the best security system 2021 by US News and World Report. Easily customized. That's right. You get a custom system. You can do it online. You um, you can get uh, free custom recommendations as well. There are. uh, This is Simply Safe's biggest discount of the year. Get a complete home security system starting at just over a hundred bucks with no long term contracts or commitments. Offer ends soon. Take forty percent off at simplysafe.com slash adam. Do it today. That is simplysafe.com slash Adam. Uh, Ann Haish is coming in later. Oh, my God. Kaylin was reading me her bio. Holy yeah. good God. Quite a story. A lot going on. Oh, my God. Dawson, maybe you can find some of that. But some of the personal stuff with Ann Haish and her bio is insane. Insane. I mean, we've interviewed her before. I just... I forgot. I just forget. Or maybe you have it. Well, yeah, I have it. If it's if it was one or two things, you'd be like, damn, this is just a list that doesn't end. It's relentless. Do you want me to read you something? Yeah. 
Um, all right, let's see. Born in Ohio, youngest of five children, moved 11 times during her childhood, settled in New Jersey at 12, lived in an Amish community at one point. Father died of AIDS when she was 13 and oh. says she was raped by him, estranged from mother after accusing her father. Sister died of brain cancer. Brother died in car accident. Surviving sister once worked as a prostitute, now designs jewelry. In August of 2000, had a mental health episode outside of Fresno while in ecstasy. Um, that's all I have here, but I believe the list there, was even longer. Yeah, Dawson has a more, a much more detailed version if you want to get into it. I do. Do you have a little more there, Dawson? Yeah, so we left off surviving sister. Uh, Abigail once worked as a prostitute, now designs jewelry. Uh, she parked her car on August in August of 2000. She drove from L.A. to Cantua Creek outside of Fresno, parked her car on a dirt road, walked one and a half miles through the desert wearing only a bra and shorts, knocked on a stranger's ranch house. Owner recognized her, called police. Combination of mental illness and having taking ecstasy, told cops she was God and wanted to take everyone to heaven in a spaceship, created a fantasy world called the fourth dimension to help cope with childhood abuse. Her alter ego was Celestia, daughter of God, half-sister of Jesus, had contacts with extraterrestrial life forms. Recovered from mental illness following the Kintua Creek incident and put her alter ego behind her. Dated Ellen DeGeneres from 1997 to 2000. Introduced to Ellen by Vince Vaughn at Morton's in West Hollywood. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was on Dancing with the Stars last year. Oh, Th yeah. Third person to be eliminated. That probably went about then. All right, uh... You get it. Crazy life. Yeah. Stories. Good interview. So we'll talk to her coming up. Uh, is Ian Bag around yet? Maybe hit a little uh, weather-related traffic. Possibly. I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything yet. It's pouring right now. It is. Uh, I hear he'll be here any second. I. Uh, I am so dumb. I make no weather-related alterations in my life mm. i i don't bring an umbrella i don't wear the right shoes mm -hmm. i just wear the same thing i don't maybe it's an la thing like, i'm just like i wear the same thing every day because that's all there is you are dressed as adam carolla too. right and then i show up and it's pouring mm -hmm. and i'm soaking and my shoes are sopped and i'm like what is this <laughs> well <laughs> What's the meaning it's of raining this? what is the meaning of this <laughs> all right we'll take a uh, quick break we'll come back with the ian bag comedian right after this It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace man, Mike from Seattle, got a rich man, poor man for you. Brings his own alcohol to the restaurant. You're either pulling a 1961 La Fleur Petrus from your personal wine cellar to uncork at Chateau Montmont, or you're topping off your Dr. Pepper with Fireball and Applebee's. Love the show. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, Ian Bag here. Yeah, my grandmother, she'd do the corkage thing. She'd bring a bottle of yeah. two-buck chuck over oh. there. She wanted a red wine with her meal, but she didn't want to spend $14 or whatever it was back then. But the corkage so. fee was probably $14. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is. It's a $25 she, bottle. <laughs> she's probably skated with, like, net, like, $3 mm. In her pocket God when she bless. walked out that place. Ian Bag is yeah. uh, with us. We'll get mm -hmm. into some of the murders and body bag coming up. Kyle Dunnigan was your roommate? He was my roommate in New York City. I think I was his first ever roommate, to be honest with you. Uh, we all lived in a two-bedroom. There were six of us, kind oh of a God. thing. All wow. Comics? Yeah. All uh, comics? All comics, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, uh, two waitresses, a one, or wa one waitress and a waiter, I think. Uh, he was awesome. We share. It was a time where you shared one phone and everybody had pagers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then one day Kyle's crying and he's going, Ian, the phone's for you. And I get on the phone and my mom goes, uh, you might want to make Kyle a cup of tea. And, uh, and I'm just like, she just called up and started telling a story about my uncle dying to Kyle. And he happened to have an Uncle Rick as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my wow. God. So he killed Uncle, uncle Rick for Kyle. My mom did. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and he kept going for it. And he's like, what happened? Oh, it was, a, it was an accident at work. What happened? Oh, a logging truck accident. And he's, he's like, his uncle works in New, in New York as, a, as an accountant. He's like, how did a logging truck get in, <laughs> into the fifth floor? <laughs> I, I remember, God, those roommates. I had a ton of roommates 
We should try to figure out how many roommates mm. we've all had. Now, I Good don't know luck. if we can count frat houses, maybe the room oh, in a frat yeah, that house. that expands it a lot. Ugh. But uh, I've probably had 10, 13 you yeah. know, roommates over the years. Yeah. And there was always the, speaking of the phone, we had to whack up the phone bill. Oh, mm. And there'd be that thing oh. where it's like, there's $17.61 to Sacramento. And then everyone would go, I don't know anyone in Sacramento. Sure. Well, somebody called Sacramento and was on for 27 <laughs> well, minutes. 2.30 on a Thursday. How was it work? I don't know anyone <laughs> in Sacramento. Oh. It's like, remember that? You that was good times. Parse everything yes, out and highlight everything. Oh. <laughs> God. The bill was in my name, and my roommate oh. was Italian. So, of course, there's all these international charges to oh. Puglia, Italy. I'm like, hey, uh, Alex, I think this is you. He's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I know. I had a roommate from Philly. Like, oh, we got calls from Philadelphia. I don't remember. Like, yeah. I don't know anyone in Philly. Yeah. You have your parents yeah. live in It's probably you. I blanked Maybe. all that stuff out. Prove it. I completely blanked having to share the bills out out of my life. Oh. I forgot about that. I don't oh. know anyone at a CC. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the phone the phone bill you could parse out pretty good. Right. The the problem I also had like the roommate we didn't have heat or air in this house we rented and uh, he had the the space heater sure. that he would frequently just leave on all uh, night and all day like expensive. go to work and it just be in the bathroom <laughs> burning the inside of the door, you know, and it's like <laughs> then it comes to the electrical it's right. like 426 bucks it's like <laughs> Hey, man, I, I barely <laughs> got anything to plug in. You know, how did we get here? Right. It's like well, I running, wasn't even here. I was at work. You got space here to running all fucking day. That's how <laughs> trying we, to save that's money. That's why we here. don't have air or heat. Right. But you can't parse that one out. Yeah. You can't right. highlight right. it. You can't do it that you gotta way. You got to split it. You got to just split it evenly, right? I Yeah. And I was always, see, I had skills. So my my roommates were, you know, struggling actors and bartenders right. and comedians and stuff like that. But I was a journeyman carpenter. Mm. So when the water heater went on the fritz, I had to replace the water heater. Like I had to fix the shit around the house because it was always kind of understood that we weren't on great terms with the <laughs> landlord. Right. So we didn't want this guy coming by Sweeping with crying eyes. And so you tend to just... Oh, I'll, you know, the, the front door, mm. the uh, deadbolt's not not latching. You know, Adam, just go do it. You know, you can fix it. And that's that's what I would do. But it, it never, never, never backed anything out of we, there. Uh, me and my friends moved into a house in Vancouver. And the first month they sold the house to this uh, Hong Kong uh, conglomerate. And they were going to turn it into a high rise. And they didn't know what was going to happen. And they didn't show up for rent for a year. Oh, sweet. So we were just like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> like 14 months in, they show up for all the money and to tell us that we're leaving. <laughs> wow. Wow. And we're like, we don't have that. I'd be like, you can, I'd be like, you can have one or the other. <laughs> yeah. We're leaving. So we had an end of the world party at the house because they were tearing it down. Oh, crazy. really? That's pretty awesome. I had, uh, yeah, I've, I've probably been as equally in, in the same amount of houses as, as apartments in terms mm. of roommates and... Um, and in rentals, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I've had bad roommates. Everyone's had bad roommates. I, the bad, I, my theory is the bad roommates are the roommates whose moms love them the most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because Sport my them. mom didn't love me. So <laughs> right. if I made lasagna, it wasn't up to anybody to clean up after right. but me. Like, I Ugh. would just go, you better. No one's going to do that for you. Who the hell right. wants to look at your old lasagna pan? I had a roommate or two who was adored by their mom. <laughs> they didn't feel that didn't way know. about lasagna pans and yeah. stuff. They were, like, in their world. It's yeah. like, well, someone's got to come in here and mop this up. Right. Yeah. I'm done. Got confused. Well, my mom killed Kyle's uncle. Oh, oh that's <laughs> right. A logging that. accident. <laughs> So I think I was love the most. You guys, have, is there any correlation yes. between the mom? The I know I brought it up before, but it's something I always think about: the doting mom and the super shitty, lazy roommate who kind of they thinks fit in. Everyone is de facto not their mom, but the world needs to kind of come mm -hmm. come yeah. around and kind of yeah. pick up their trash. They've all for been them. deputized to take care of them. Right. Right. Yeah, I know it pretty well because I think I was that roommate at first because you've met Marlis. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I just, I didn't know how to do anything. And, and 
I'm not blaming them, but I I was never allowed to have a job besides camp counselor. I was never allowed to make How money. How do you cancel if you a counsel if you've never had a job? <laughs> I was not allowed to have a real job. Like, we got three dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah, but still. I was never allowed. We never had an allowance. Oh. It was if if we deem it acceptable, you'll get it, but we don't pay you to be our kid. We don't pay you to set the table. This is what you do because you're our kid. So I really had no sense of how fucking anything worked in my first uh, apartment. So I, I was the shitty roommate until I learned how to be a human being. What do you do? <sighs> huh. I've had the roommates that then got the girlfriend and the girlfriend sort of moves in, sure. and now you have a de facto third roommate mm-hmm. that doesn't pay rent. The same price. So he's around and watching TV. So he's there, yeah. and now it's kind of weird because you're living with this person you're not banging <laughs> at all. And you're she feels all the very entitled. She's like there yeah. all the time. Yes. And, you're and like, they're annoyed when you come around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They judge you, too. Yeah. Like, why, why are you such a loser? Yeah, you don't have yeah. a girlfriend. Yeah. Right. They are, yeah. But what do you do? And because I've had that, since, and I've had this super weird, lazy girlfriend who like would come in, make a mess in the kitchen, yeah. and be like, "Oh, I'm going back to my place now." <laughs> like, really? There's lipstick all over the fucking glasses. Like, <laughs> that's no good. It's no I good. I know, man. Uh, I wear lipstick. Do yeah. <laughs> what do you do? You, do you have a you gotta conversation. You got to talk to the dude. You got to talk to the yeah. dude. Of and she'll do something like, "Oh, but I made everyone cupcakes," but like she didn't pay rent for four yeah. months. Right. Yeah, you usually no lose good. that roommate too. That roommate usually goes good. once you talk to them. Yeah, then they're, they're all butt hurt. And That's right. Go. Good riddance, guys. She's the best. <laughs> Why would you buy be assholes to her? Because she is the best. I had the roommate. I had this roommate. I I like. I'm I'm very enamored with people who sort of judge themselves much differently than society. They're, they're very generous to themselves. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example. So I had a roommate. So when I moved out of my last apartment, I had a roommate. And I kind of felt bad for leaving my roommate. And But I bought a house. So and I was like sort of becoming successful now. And mm-hmm. he hadn't really become successful. And the house was yeah, big enough. It was probably 22, 23 100 square feet and had a second bedroom. So I said, uh, well, why don't you move into the second bedroom and we can just live in this bigger house together? Oops. And <laughs> then he was like, fine, but I'm, I don't have a job or anything. And I was like, All right, I'll, let you, I'll let you slide for a few months or whatever. And he didn't pay rent for like six months or something like that. And we worked up a tab. <laughs> Maybe it's four thousand dollars or three thousand dollars or whatever whatever that number was, and he still didn't really have a job. But I said, you know, the good news is is I'm like working on this place, <laughs> and uh, like you could come here and paint on Saturday, sure. kind of you just work it off. Yeah, and he's like, dishes. all right, I'll work it off. He showed up for about two four hour sessions on a Saturday, and it was like, all right, we're good now. We're even. Like. <laughs> Yeah, you Mark Aragos, you get eight hundred and seventy-one dollars an hour to paint, like, because that's kind of how the math is. The math is working out that you're making several hundred dollars an hour to paint living rooms. But that's really the math. Yeah. You, you've got there nine be hours. Job. You owe me thirty-three hundred dollars, and you figure we're good. Yeah, eight hours should cover it. That should cover it. I'm just telling you, people are pretty generous with yes. themselves. You know, you know what I mean? He's made himself a contractor. That's He's right. charged you so much. <laughs> <laughs> the homeowner. My my offer mentioned Italian friend who I roomed with for many years. Good good cl- close friend of mine. Uh, we had a third roommate for a short period of time. I think I told the story maybe once years ago, but his name was Jacob, but he was terrible. And now that you mention love too much by the mom, it makes perfect sense. He was a bit of a sociopath. Um, Jacob would not do anything. He wouldn't help with any chores, you know, dishwasher, whatever, you know, washing dishes, cleaning, whatever. And eventually uh, I got a, a frustrated after a few months of this. I was like, Jacob, you have to help. You have to help a little bit. Can you please just, just unload the dishwasher? And he, go, and he stands up from the couch and he goes, fine. And he trudges over the dishwasher and starts to unload it like at mm-hmm. that moment. And I'm standing there and he, tur- and he stops. He looks at me and he goes, I'm not your employee, Brian. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, do you're not. So <laughs> Clearly, jealous. fired you long ago. You've made that you very were. clear. Yeah. I'm jealous of those guys. Uh, they they we, live well. They he live was well. so offended that I asked him to unload the dishwasher. I've told this story before, but it's been a long time. We we had three dudes in a one bedroom oh, in in North smell. Hollywood, mm. 
And then the one dude had the girlfriend, too, and <laughs> she would hang out. Now there's like four people mm-hmm. in, a, in a one bedroom. And me and my other roommate were like, we got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> How do we get rid of this guy? He was our friend. On the next episode so of Body Bag. Right right <laughs> just tell him, you got you got to leave, man. So I was like, oh, I, okay, I know how to do it. So I called the landlord, and it was this great conversation. I called Jim, the landlord, and I went, uh, hey, you know, we have three guys living in this one apartment here. <laughs> And I know that's against the, the rules, right? And he's like, that's against the rules. You know when you tell people stuff and then <laughs> yeah, they act yeah. like they found it out? You're darn right it <laughs> is. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> right. And these are the these are like cousins of the people who are you who you say something and then they go, I'm not going to do that. And mm-hmm. then they jump in. Mm-hmm. You go, I was going to go to Vegas. I was thinking about leaving LAX, but I decided Burbank would be faster. And they go, don't do LAX. That's exactly what I just said to you. But no, thanks Burbank for making your better, idea. Dude. Right. So the, so I called Jim and I'm like, hey, Jim got a third guy here when I, you know, I know it's against the rules. Like, That's against the rules. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's against the rules. So he's like, this is in violation of uh, your contract or whatever it is. I go, I know. He goes, well, you can't have that. I go, I know. Now put that into a letter <laughs> and then send it to us. And he's like, yeah, well, this is against, you know, I was like, yeah, this Understood. is against your lease. You'll I go, be receiving I know. a letter. <laughs> Understood. You'll be receiving. So he sent the letter over and then we also had to make sure that the other roommate opened the letter. Oh, right. Because oh, we, no. we didn't be the one, like, as the town crier reading right. the letter. Yeah. It seemed a little cooked, right. you know what I mean? So we just kind of left Love it out, kind of went, oh, the landlord, what, what's he want? I don't know. Should check it out. You know, see what he said? He's like, open up. What is it? You know, I was like, well. <laughs> and then, but it still came down to one of us. Well, I was going to say. Leave. But didn't right. two of you have to leave? No, we, we he, have two people. We could have there. friendly two fire. people in the one in the one, but we couldn't have three. Did he read it? Was like, so Adam, where yeah, are you gonna go? Bad news. Well, <laughs> you know, you know, you probably heard me tell stories about Jim and Chris Carolla, right? It's not exactly like they kept my bedroom exactly right. as it was right. with the Leif Garrett poster <laughs> the on museum. the ceiling. No, hey, one one house they converted. By the way, the houses I lived in were so fucked up. That when the kids left, the rooms didn't get converted into offices or mm. dad's study or anything. They they got converted into storage units. Oh boy. Like literally they became storage. Junk my rooms. room became Sounds the like junk my parents room. might be your parents, just to really? let you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it was well documented that I had nowhere no to go. go. There, I wasn't I wasn't going anywhere. But that's anywhere. what I'm saying. Did he realize that as he read the letter? I it was now I just put it between the two, oh. but we kinda we kinda worked it out and he was the last roommate in. So oh, he was first like, to Well, go. you yeah. gotta be the first to go. Yeah. yeah. My my favorite roommate was we moved in, into a place and we rented a U-Haul mm-hmm. and we didn't do any cal- calculations and we took everything out and it got stuck on the on the roof in the parking lot. <laughs> so oh, had, the, so the actual so U-Haul. The U-Haul. So, the so we had to bring all the furniture back in to weigh it down and drive it out <laughs> to get it out of there. Just, <laughs> the uh, the staff, Kalen, had uh, three roommates. Uh, Chris had three. Dawson, fifteen roommates. Hmm. Emmy three, Matt twenty two. Whoa! If you're counting college, then yeah, you're gonna go through roommates quite a yeah. bit and quite often. And pre- had, oh, that's right. It's I had college. twelve. Yeah. Gary had twelve. Ryan had fourteen at the tender age of who gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old Ryan is. Twenty three. Perpetually. That's a lot of twenty five. Well, that's that, not including the frat house he lived in. Too. Oh, oh I is, assume that was the frat house. This is college. Yeah, I guess we have to modify it, which is roommates non college or uh, roommates in housing. Maybe like not frat. Yeah. I don't know. Literally the person you shared a room with at the frat house. All right. Well we can Wives uh, and kids. we can work that out. <laughs> All right, the body bag. We have a we have an intro. We have a oh, couple yeah. stories here. Yeah, okay, well done. It's time. There has been another murder. For Ian Bags. <laughs> body bag. This one's all about roommates. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a, the first one was uh, there's a guy Dylan Millard. His family owned an airline in Canada, and first of all, it was about Canada, so I was very excited. Sure. I was like, "Yes, we're finally in the news!" And uh, he killed his dad, but they didn't know he killed his dad. 
and uh, he shot him in the eye oh. and, and made it look like a suicide, which is just, no weird, <laughs> just, the, just the weirdest suicide ever to shoot yourself in the eye, right? Yeah. Um, but then he started building, his, and I think Adam would like this. He that's, built, that, that's that Woody Allen joke where he goes, he shot him in the eye. Oh, oh, he's blind? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, the bullet, yeah. <laughs> So Woody that's, Allen show from awesome. I don't know what Manhattan or something. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. The, so, anyways, this guy started building. He's building. Started building incinerators to get rid of bodies. He was just oh, like he, he killed. Bodies. His, yeah, because he killed his girlfriend, and then he started hanging out with a buddy, and they kind of got into it, like they were roommates. Wow. But they were he and in, he inherited the airline, and then he just still started doing all this stuff. You know, he was starting murder, and then he made this girlfriend disappear. His ex girlfriend. Of w- w- disappeared, but she was dating somebody else, and she had her. This is I love this part. She had her phone and her iPad, right, with mm-hmm. her when she disappeared. Mm-hmm. But they just took it over, like they just took over the iPad. Oh, they adopted. <laughs> yeah, they adopted. So they had all the all the information on the mm-hmm. iPad. I just love smart guy. Oh, uh, just nobody's ever smart in a murder. <laughs> and and, and, and I'm, the thing that got me so mad was this kid had everything. He just had everything. He had his own airline. Even though he was going to get it, even though his dad didn't die quick enough, so he killed his dad. He was going to have everything. So he just he he just wow. started it up. But then he got excited, and he just, like, enjoyed murdering people, so he built this incinerator. <laughs> and then they needed a bigger truck to pull the incinerator. So they, they, they looked for a truck online, oh. found the truck, and took it for a test drive and killed the guy that had the truck. <laughs> Wow, it's just it's just incredible. And then they what they did they took apart the car, the truck, and then took pieces of their truck to rebuild it so it looked like their truck and used the VIN number and stuff like that. It was insane the amount of work that they put in for this wow. stupid. And then and then uh, the you know they're looking for the guy that disappeared with the truck. And then they, they tried to kill another guy, but he turned out to be in the Israeli army. Oh, <laughs> so, Krav Maga. So, yeah, so, so they're like, like, man, we're not going to kill you. And they decided not to kill him, but they recognized him. And with the tattoo, that's how they found him. He had a, a, t- a tattoo, like, spelt wrong or something like sure. that on his thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, beef, but it had an A in it, you know. <laughs> so, so that's how they caught him. Uh, just, it was just so good. And then, uh, and then he... he uh, he finally got caught, but he had this. This is my favorite. He just this is how you know a kid's gonna be a murderer. I think. Tell please, me if I'm wrong. Please tell me. He had his toolbox that he locked up that he'd take that had drugs and stuff in it, uh-huh. and he'd show up at the party and he'd do it with special people, like that guy. You have you ever been around oh, that guy? Oh yeah, the kit guy. Yeah, the stash guy. Damn. Yeah, the toolbox I always liked that guy. guy. Yeah. Really? You like that guy? Dude, I always thought that guy was the, the murderer. You're suspect. <laughs> no, he was always weird. Like, the, the fact that he had to lock it up and he just kept yeah. it with him. That, that kid was weird, always weird and doing something wrong. You what think? about the cigar box stash guy? That's different, though. Uh, like, yeah, the, okay. the toolbox. Yeah, I'm not, I like the cigar. I mean, Dawson, you must have had a cigar box stash. Seems like you're a cigar box stash guy. Yeah, but that's where... Yeah, you know, growing up, when you found a cigar box, you're like, oh, I'm going to keep that and I'll put my weed in there. It was almost yeah. like uh, growing up, like in the 70s, because now there's just everything all the time. Yeah. Like uh, every container. Sure. Every time you go to a Chinese food place, they give you a, a lockbox. Tupperware. Oh, yeah, or a lock yeah, box. Really like, good Tupperware. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm not, my grandmother would have kept that shit for 40 years and and you would have had to sign it out. She took it from her house. <laughs> like, that was a durable good. And when I was growing up, it was sort of like, it's like being on an island and mm-hmm. anything that washed oh. up. It's like, we could use this yep. shoe. Right. Yeah. We could use this. Like, everything had a use. You wouldn't throw away any box or container or. The Crown Royal bag was a big thing. Crown for Royal sure. bag Everybody was a had big, one of those. big ticket well, item. In yeah. high school, the big ticket item for weed was the regular size, not the mini, the regular size Altoid tin. Oh, Altoid tins? Yes, those were really? things. Oh, like, oh, you were whoa. done with I've never these heard of things. that. Oh, that was is it because really it was one. it would keep the smell away? Or? It, ca- it, it smelled minty. It clasped pretty strong, and it oh, fit yeah, in your yeah, pocket. Yeah, anything that and had a, a standard, lid. I know it was yeah. going to A standard four-inch yeah. by... Two and a half inch uh, metal pipe would fit right perfect, perfectly, doobie, perfect, perfect, doobie, yeah. perfect doobie length too. But I, I, I did have a guy <laughs> who, before weed could be gotten anywhere, um, who would show up at my house with a duffel bag, and he would bring break out all kinds of ounces and say, "This is this, this is this, and this," and that was my favorite dude in the world. So. 
Yeah, mm. that's what I'm saying. But they didn't have a lock. <laughs> you no, know, they didn't have a toolbox. They didn't have a lunchbox. I don't think. I don't think what this guy had in there was uh, was you know weed and stuff. I think he was he oh. increased the yeah, okay. whatever was going on. Right. You know, and I, when I grew up in, in in Canada, we smoked hash. I don't know if you guys were hashed, man. So mm-hmm. we'd only go to the family's houses that had burnt knives. Because <laughs> right. they'd burn them on the stove, right? So right. that's uh-huh. that, that's how we knew which the house like the was sticky, the best. Like yeah. the hash. Yeah, like little, like it would come in blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it would, and you'd put it on some foil and like heat it up and like, no. it, how would you do it? We'd put it on knives, little, like little balls on a knife, mm-hmm. and then you'd heat up knife and then it would burn up. And then you'd have a two liter bottle of Coke and you'd cut the bottom off mm-hmm. and flip it around and put ice underneath Gravity it and bomb. poke some holes in it. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do love that because I love how when it comes to getting high, everyone turns into MacGyver. Yes. <laughs> but if your dad said, uh, "Help me unload the trunk," you'd right. be like, "Come on, how? Dad! How does that work? <laughs> you know, I, I don't fucking not good with my hands." <laughs> the best were those big hands. like Teddy Graham tubs, and it was the the it looked like a teddy bear and it was plastic. Uh, you submerge well, that. Squeezers, right? No, I'm talking like a like oh, cookie jar size. Graham, yeah, yeah you submerge that in half the sink mm-hmm. and and pull hard. And pray for daylight. Your I parents, mean, I don't know. Your parents should have made you do more work at home. I you know, like that's a true. Complete pothead. I'm a little disappointed in there. <laughs> I told you, that's why when you go to a new house or you're renting a new apartment, you have to check for the screens inside the faucets because that shit's going to be gone because you need that uh, to put you put it in your bowl to make sure you don't suck up any resin. Oh, your parents probably should have gave you <laughs> some money <laughs> or I some know, responsibility <laughs> or responsibility. If if you had, if you'd gotten <laughs> paid just a little bit for doing the dishes, you wouldn't have to rob people's sinks. That's exactly sinks. right. <laughs> well, yeah, my mom had a pot plant in the backyard. <laughs> no way. Oh yeah. Did we have we ever talked about that? Maybe. I don't think so. Yeah. What I, did she do with it? Well, not much because she complained, takes work. She complained it, there was no tomatoes on I, it. I thought it was really <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I had one of my uh, cool friends who was a little bit gangster and uh, sort of half a criminal. His name sure. was uh, Hamid. <laughs> and I uh, showed sure. Hamid, <laughs> like, hey, my, look at this pot plant. Next day, gone. Uh, no, right, wow. right from the root, just pulp, yeah. the whole thing just. Gone. But since your mom never went to the backyard, she probably never noticed. Uh, she didn't. I don't. I mean, she, she figured someone hopped over the fence and <laughs> copped it, but she couldn't really yeah. pin it on me or Hamid. I'm Hamid surprised. Ended up you prison. think she would have gone oh. directly to you and said, "Adam, mm. it yeah. was you. I know it was you." Like, I, if I had a kid, that's if anything, booze, pot, weed, cocaine disappeared, <laughs> I'd blame it on them. <laughs> well, you know, it was a. You know, we had a kind of uh, understanding. Mm. You know what I mean? We had kind of the understanding. Remember in the movie The Town when they pulled the minivan up with all the automatic mm-hmm. weapons and the cop just sort of looked at him and then just sort of turned and looked the other way? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was our relationship, essentially, uh. which is, all right, there's going to be no savings for college. Uh-huh. There's going to be no lasagna. <laughs> but I'm also not going to be up your ass. Like, well, you got a C in algebra? Like, <laughs> right. think of this. It was a tacit agreement. Like, you don't want any part of me? Fine, but that's a two-way street. You can't get up my ass around. when Hamid steals your pocket. Plant, or when I'm pulling a couple of D's and in, in you're high trading school lasagna math. for D's. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm, this is our understanding. Yeah. <laughs> to be okay. fair, like my parents were consistent. Like right. there, there's bad parents who don't do shit, and then they're all up their kids' ass right. all the time. Right. Curfews, sure. and report cards, and meanwhile they're not doing any parenting. Right. But we had an agreement. Yeah. An unspoken agreement. I didn't realize how Huck Finn like. You grew up. Yeah, I grew up very Huck Finney. Like, like I ran around and we just we just did everything. Yeah, all Paid the all the time. Yeah. yeah. Didn't everybody kind of Huck Finney? Kind of like, like wasn't there like a time when it was a like that? It was encouraged, right? Yeah, we would just go out and summer nights and like find apartment buildings and jump off the roof into the swimming pool and stuff. Right. Like we just ran in the streets. But how many of your friends like grew up the exact same way? All of them. See, that's what I'm saying. They like, were feral. <laughs> they, were they were feral. They were feral. They were peeing on everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. That's that's how they grew up. And you know, later on, I started noticing some of the guys who lived up in the hills. Some of my Jewish friends from high school. And I was like, oh, they seem to have a little more going on. Mm-hmm. A little less uh, roof jumping. A little less roof mm-hmm. jumping. Yeah. And more pantries with uh, mm-hmm. things to eat for me to get <laughs> my hands pudding. on. The instant <laughs> pudding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the notion of a pantry seemed real. Was 
foreign to me. You all know you got a closet That's full funny. of food back there. <laughs> I yeah, we we didn't have we didn't have any. You got a closet shit. in your kitchen, <laughs> and there's food in it. There's food in it. I remember I was sitting for we I had to go over and feed their cat and water mm-hmm. their plants and seeing uh, a thing that peanuts came out came out of uh, that was just sitting on it. I was just like, well, that is bizarre. Oh like, yeah. Just, oh, like it just you just push the button and peanuts it's come out of the peanuts. Box. I open <laughs> I open one of my friend's pantries up in the hills. And saw the hostess ding dong dispenser, oh. like a tower of ding dong. Yeah, you take one what out, the next one slide falls. one out, yeah. the next one drops in. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god! Heaven. What's just what's Shangri-La. the meaning of this? You, do you know this is here? It's like, yeah, it's there. <laughs> you why aren't you? Why, what do you mean? Why aren't you all up in this yet? How come you didn't say anything? I'm like, I don't know. It's just there. You, you want a ding dong? Another one drops down. Like, well, but how fast can you move your hands? <laughs> I, mean, I, I got a storm in my sweat jacket. I'm, I'm making, taking my skirt and making a satchel out of it. Uh, you know, cheeks like a squirrel. Lo- loading them. Like, What's going on? <laughs> Look, it's there. I would have been gone. I would have been gone if Hamid had seen it. Oh, oh yeah. Hamid had seen that ding dong dispenser. Oh, like a fucking Dupar's pie in the refrigerator oh, with on. one slice taking out of it. Like, what is this? <laughs> Yeah, Why isn't this in your gun vault? I like, how long has it been? I don't know, three days? What do you, what do you mean three days? <laughs> like, I couldn't fucking wrap my brain around uh, it. The one slice thing's still a little hard to wrap your brain around, right? Uh, right. Yeah. Who's this pie for? Well, yeah. Who brought it home? Was someone in the mood for pie and then not so much? And bailed? Maybe it's mean. Like, they're just, oh, I had this piece. Oh. Nobody look at it and put it in the... Yeah, the the, uh, the rule at the house was, not my house, but that was Donnie's in house. The, the rule of that house was always a ton of, of Chinese food in the fridge, just mm. piles of Chinese food. But it had to be there for four days before I could eat it. And at some point... <laughs> Domain poisoning. Well, at some point it would go south, mm. and right. then it was a no-fly zone for the dad and the mom. Right. But that still didn't mean right. I couldn't. So, I couldn't bring it back to life with the microwave, just you know, spot. sprinkles of water. But it was always a little controversy about when the Chinese food <laughs> hit the funny. fridge. Like, it'd be like, well, it's it's Tuesday, right? <laughs> yeah, I think oh my, my parents God. went out. Did they go out Saturday night or Sunday night? I can't remember what night Come they were. Come on, were. Saturday. Come on, Saturday. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but whose rule was it? Was it the kids or the, the parents? Dad, the dad, the, the dad got so tired of me jumping on the Chinese, you know, because if I did get there prematurely. Right. And I just vanquished his Chinese oh, food. Right. He was like, fuck, I brought all this shit home a day ago. Where right. is it? You know, and right. it would animate it, you know, and it like, you can't eat any of this unless it goes Unless it starts getting fuzzy. It has to start yeah. going south. So did that, was there a conversation where they had yes. with you where like you had to sit down and look at them? You can't eat our food. Oh my God. When I used to babysit my neighbor, well, you can't eat, you have to wait three or four days. Yeah. They're just, there's a three or four day rule. <laughs> look. <laughs> That is so it's funny. It's a cooling off period. That is so funny. I, 36 hours, Adam. <laughs> when I babysat my neighbors, I used to just fucking go full, you know, Kodiak bear in a dumpster <laughs> on their fucking fridge. I mean, I was, I would open pie filling and dump it in a bowl and put like marshmallows and Toll House morsels. Oh. Like, I would go nuts. And like, I would have, and I, they, I would have very uncomfortable conversations. Uh. Like, we're leaving. <laughs> There's a full ham in the refrigerator. <laughs> that is not to be touched. We've counted that the spirals. Is, that is for Thanksgiving. <laughs> that do not touch. Like it was a lot of like, here's what you. I'm surprised they didn't put post-its on shit. Like if they didn't have, if they had post-its back then, then Sharon, I can't think of her last you know, name, my neighbor would have put post-its on shit I could eat. <laughs> it wasn't even a cooked ham. It was it was raw, but it still had to tell you because you'd be baking it do by the time. Do not get the spit out. <laughs> Do not get the rotisserie and the spit fired up. I mean, like, literally, stuff, you cannot, they would tell us. Leave you, the cloves. And- yes, you eat everything in this house. There are things you can't Adam's eat. Adam's coming over, put all the bakes, <laughs> baking goods away so he can't cook. cook well, I would, go, uh, I would go nuts. Did you have shame around that conversation? Of course he did. Yes, I, of course. Gobs of shame. Mountains of shame. I remember. Delicious shame. I, delicious, bountiful shame. Enough to go around. A, a, horn, a horn of plenty of shame. <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh, I, I, I have distinct Uh-oh. memories about being like in the McDonald's in Silver Lake. I was also <laughs> c- 
cursed with a bunch of little skinny, scrawny pussy friends who didn't, <laughs> really weren't hungry any yeah. of the time. I was like, and I'd kind of go to their house and be like, hey, let's get some space sticks or get to that ding dong dispenser or something. And they'd be like, oh, come on, let's go play. Later. Go, let's no, go play don't play. So fast. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's go play. Let's stay by the fridge. And I, could, I remember going out with my friend Eric and his dad to the, the uh, McDonald's in Silver Lake and I was so shameful, and it was so we- my parents didn't take us anywhere or buy us anything mm-hmm. or anything. So it, was, it seemed very weird to me that someone else's dad would yeah. be buying me lunch. Right. I didn't. I didn't. He doesn't owe felt you anything. Weird, you know. Mm-hmm. Felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the fucking son is just like, just a plain cheeseburger with no fries. Oh. I'm like, I want a fucking Big Mac yeah. and a fucking quarter mm-hmm. pounder and a large fries yeah. and a, a fucking parfait. shamrock <laughs> shake. Like I want all this, and. He was like, just a, just a regular burger, no fries. And then the dad would like look at me and go, okay, what would you, you like to order? And I'd go, I'll just take the burger, just a regular burger. Just, yeah. just a burger, two, yeah. no fries. <laughs> like, I, I, how could I out? It was bad enough that he was buying yeah. me something to eat. I could Same. outdo his son. No. His own he probably would have loved it, though. He probably would have, like, sure finally, fucking, somebody ate. The guy lived in a big house. Like, he had he could money. Afford like, the four dollars. Stupid. Like, like, I would give a shit as a parent. Yeah. You know, I'd be excited. It'd, it'd yeah. be a novelty if the kid ordered two Big Macs. Keep it something. under 60 cents, Abbott. <laughs> oh. Okay, sorry, I forgot. Anne Hayes is here. We got into the stories. I got I got sidetracked with the sorry. roommates. No, that's all it's your my fault. fault. Ian. Then, I know. Bring us home, uh, <laughs> Brian, if we could. That was Ian Bags, body bag. Let me tell you about Pendulum. Yeah, we're learning all about the connection between your gut microbiome and uh, type 2 diabetes. Yeah, we're, we're learning a lot during this pandemic, and your gut and your microbiome is a big deal. Pendulum glucose control, first and only medical probiotic designed to manage A1C blood glucose levels through microbiome health. You've got to take care of that stuff with two types of diabetes, diet and exercise. I should say with uh, type 2 diabetes, diet and exercise alone. Well, they're not enough. Pendulum's team of scientists and doctors isolated unique strains of beneficial gut bacteria to help people with type 2 diabetes manage blood sugar. Formulated and bottled in the U.S. with the highest safety and quality standards, no GMO, um, non-GMO project verified. So non-GMO Project verified. It's Pendulum, right, Dawson? Take control of your glucose levels today. Try Pendulum Glucose Control for 90 days. If you're not satisfied with your levels, you'll get your money back. Visit PendulumLife.com to find out more and use promo code Adam for 20% off your first bottle of member off your first bottle of membership. That's P-E-N-D-U-L-U-M-L-I-F-E dot com. Promo code Adam. I think I've I've just been tallying. I think I've had nine roommates. Mm-hmm. Thus far, but no, no college. I was roommates. just gonna so say these that these are all fucking adults right. living in houses, if you want to call them houses. I call it demand castle. When you go <laughs> in, you blame somebody else for what you don't have or want. So I, whether or not it's like I'm going out on my first date, I'm getting ready, but blah, blah. We walk into that first date and go like, you don't like my ass? Are you looking at my you looking at my tits? What are you looking at? You don't like this? Oh, we we shame somebody into not liking us before we even enter the room. We're like, I don't want you to date me. Okay, bye. All I did was like, look at your ass. 